Welcome to The Voice of Jesus. My name is Randolph Kubitschek, and we're going to talk about today you choose. You can choose life or death. You know, in these, de- in these last days that we're living in, I believe it's the very last days that we're living in, we are seeing so much change. Uh, I remember I was raised in the 60s, and it was such an innocent era. Uh, there wasn't the technology that we have today with the computers and the communication and the social networking that we do have today. Not only that, I believe also the news wasn't that biased as it was. Today we have opinionated news. We don't have uh, unbiased news. But what I would like to talk to you today about is what God says. Because at the end of the day, it's what God says and what, what, what God says matters. Not what man says, not what man is doing. Uh, everything is focused on the U.S. elections because I believe these U.S. elections will affect the world. It will not only affect one country as one nation, but it will affect the whole world. Uh, it's not one man's job to save the world. It's not one man's job to fix the world. I believe uh, Donald J. Trump is the man for America, but I don't believe he's the one who's the ultimate fixer of America. He will, he will, he will, he will support things that are Christ-like. He's done more for the church than any other president in the United States, for Israel, for the people of America. Etc. But the main issue is, is that we look unto Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. God has given us instructions for things for us to do, not just for him to come down and say, I'll work it all out. I'll, I'll solve all your problems. God wants part- participation. He wants cooperation. He wants somebody to work with. Remember, we are the vessel of God. We are that clay earth and vessel where the Holy Spirit abides. So this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God wants to work in us and through us for his glory. And the most important thing that we can do is we can start to see what God says in his word that what we need to do. He's given us the instruction manual. There's nothing more difficult than that, just to read the manual. But the problem today is Christians don't read the manual. People are still waiting for God to come down from heaven and God to do a supernatural work in their life without them doing anything. God wants us to stand on his word, to believe what he says and says what he believes. And we're going to say, Lord, we're going to work with you on this. That's why we pray. We pray for that reason. That's why we have prayers, that we can have this open open communication, this dialogue with God, that we could talk to him and he can talk to us and we can stand on God's promises. So it's important that we mix God's Word with faith. And every time we've got to read God's Word, we've got to read it with faith. God, you said, Father, I believe that's what you say. That's why I love uh, reading the Psalms. There's so much uh, wisdom in there, so much insight. And today I was just walking with my mother on the phone and you know, I talk to my mother every day. I'm here in the Czech Republic and she's there in Australia. We we have prayer every day. And I was reading her from, uh, from Isaiah Uh, chapter 40 and it says fear not for I am the Lord thy God I am with you fear not it keeps on saying and it just goes to show that God is giving us an instruction to do what fear not you know in these last days we're going to have some incredible challenges uh, personally nation nationwide worldwide as we're seeing at the moment now With these lockdowns, people facing huge financial difficulties, marital problems, suicides, more sickness and disease. These um, lockdowns are causing more mental distress and mental diseases than this virus itself. This virus is is a pandemic. This was planned. And I'm not going to get into that, but there is an agenda behind it. But look, at the end of the day, you're going to have to make a decision what you want to do and how you want to approach it. It's not so much what you hear, but how you hear it. What, not what you see, but how you're going to see it. If we're going to look everything through God's word, God's eyes, fear not. God is with you. And he'll give you that peace. And he'll give you that understanding. I want to go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30. And it says here, in verse 15, it says, See, I have set before you today, today, Life and good, death and evil. If you obey my commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and keeping his commandments and his statutes. All right then, so God is saying this is what you need to do. So 
That's the condition. Here are the results. And his rule, rule, then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. Now he is talking to Joshua, we know, because Joshua had to enter into that promised land. When Joshua did enter into that promised land, there were seven tribes waiting for Joshua to have him to fight. And he thought. And as you see in Joshua chapter 1, I think it's around verse 8, and he says from the beginning, Be strong. Fear not, for I am with you, says the Lord. And, and I think it starts from that verse 6, I think, and goes onwards. That he's saying to him also to meditate on the Lord day and night. In other words, get into God's word. Know the word, know the promise that what you can stand on, and you can declare that to God and say, God, you said, I'm only standing what you said. You know, um, I had a discussion one time with a dear brother, and he was talking to me about God's all sovereign. God will do it in his time, and God will do what he wants to do. That's true, to a point. God will do what he says in his word, because his word is his will. But we need to cooperate with what God says. And it's not only that, it's not to think about this um, way that God is so sovereign that no matter what we do or say, God's going to have it his way. Listen, God has set guidelines. God has set in his word what he wants to do, how he wants to do, and when he wants to do it. We just have to agree with what God says. And it's not this kesara, sara, what will be, will be, well, look, if it's God's will, so be it. Well, find out what his will is. His word is his will. You know, faith begins where the will of God is known. And we have to understand our faith will be activated when we start to know the word of God. He's saying, obey these commandments. Love the Lord thy God. I think everything's going to be based down on love and faith because faith works through love. If we start to be serious about the things of God, and I, I, I'm not going to be con, uh, uh, condescending or, or judging anybody, but the Christians need to get off their backsides a little bit. They need to spend more time in prayer. They need to go through prayer walks. They need to get into the Word. They need to have a life of worship and praise. They need to start to get before the Father's face and say, Father, we are in distress at the moment. You know, I believe now, and, and I'm reading, reading through the reviews and, and comments of, of certain programs I watch about the U.S. election, I believe that there is more prayer now because the um, life is in the balance at the moment. There is more prayer now than I believe any other time before. That people are praying from all over the world. I pray for, I'm not an American citizen. I love America, got a lot of friends there, but I want to pray for what's right. Uh, and I want to pray for what my conscience is speaking to my heart. And I want to know that what I'm praying for, that it will come to pass and that it be the Lord's will. And I believe God wants righteousness because righteousness exalts a nation. I believe that Donald J. Trump is standing for righteousness, for a nation. And it's not only for a nation, but for the world. Because that man has to face the world. He's facing all oppositions. Every opposition from every country, every media outlet, not only in America, but worldwide. All the evil corruption of the deep state and the establishment. All these democratic politicians that are all corrupt. And I don't say the Republicans aren't corrupt. They're all corrupt, most of them. But there's just a few. And I believe God picked out a few people that will stand by with him and serve him. I remember when, just recently when, when Trump was talking about, he said, the boss, Jesus Christ, the boss. He's my boss. He's the one. And that's so true. It's him and him alone, Jesus Christ. And so we pray to God, to the, our Father, through Jesus Christ, that the Lord's will will be done on earth. And he works through people. God works through empty vessels, yielded vessels, surrendered vessels. That's what he wants. And let's admit, we're all a work in progress. We haven't got a glorified body yet. We haven't got to the other side yet. So we're still here on earth in this earth suit. And we're always going to have temptation. We're always going to battle against sin. We're always going to have that good fight of faith, the spirit warring against the flesh. We're all going to have that. But God is saying here in his word, he said, listen, he said, love me, put me first. Remember what he said to Peter? If you love me, feed my sheep. In other words, saying, if you love me, do what I say. If you really, really love me, do and obey my commandments. And then he said, 
this is the condition. You see, it's a conditional thing. He's saying, if you do this, I will bless you. And I truly believe this is where the Christian has to start to line up their thinking, renew their mind to say, God, if you're saying that if you're promising me all this and I do all these things, you will bless me. That's what he's saying. Now, let's continue in that. And it goes into verse 17. Or just, just finishing on it, take possession of it. Now, he's saying entering into the land to take the possession of, the, of crossing the Jordan into the promised land. Uh, let me say this. You have a land to possess. You have a place to possess. And it could be any area in your life, financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, uh, whatever, on whatever level. You can enter on into that promised land if you seek the Father's face and obey his commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind and strength. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Two greatest commands Jesus gave us. Uh, is, it, is it difficult to do? Yes, it is difficult to do. But you're not alone to do it. I'm not going to leave you as orphans, Jesus said. I, my Father is going to send you the promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's there. That's what he's there for. That's why we have him, the helper, the comforter, the counselor, the parakletos. So here he's saying, you shall possess that land. You shall possess. But in verse 17, but if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but you are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them. Now, you know what the greatest sin today is on this earth is idolatry. Idolatry is the one thing that is probably the biggest sin in this world that is talk, uh, making people fall, fall away from the faith or not even coming to the faith and the knowledge of the saving power of Jesus Christ because they are so caught up in their little worlds to worship their things, their house, their car, uh, other people, things, idols, idols, all these idols that we have, all that we love, all that we cherish. All that we do, and, and you can see it, people, people love things. But let me tell you about things. Things corrupt. Things go rusty. The, the, the moths eat them away. Let me tell you about things. Things are not the answer to man's or to mankind's uh, problem. The problem of mankind is sin. The only answer to that is coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin. For you to have not living with that that shame or guilt in your life, knowing that there is a living hope living inside of you, that with the day you die, you know where you're going. That is good news. That that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm not ashamed to say that. Was that in one John? Uh, sorry, Romans uh, one sixteen. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. There's the power behind God's word. And it's a saving, a saving word. That means it will save your life from eternal damnation. Save your life from committing suicide. And maybe you're thinking now that it's it's hopeless. But with God, it's not hopeless. There's hope. He's the living hope. The hope of glory lives inside of you. That's what you have to understand. There's the hope of glory inside of you. And I think that's in Colossians 1.27. Now, they went out. These, the, the children of Israel went out to serve other things. Gods. They served idols. And you might think, well, we don't have those idols today. Oh, yes, we do. You know, when you hear that, 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 that term or that phrase, oh, I love my phone, oh, I love my car. No, you don't love those things. You love God, you love your spouse, you love your children, you love your, your, your family. You like those things, but you don't love them. You don't worship them, but then again, we do have people worship them. They cherish them more than they cherish their own life, some of them. That's wrong. And you might be seeing, you might be thinking, well, how am I, I can like these. Yes, you're exactly right. You can have those things. Having things is not a sin. It's when those things have you, it's sin. That's the difference. Because things start to control you, start to manipulate you. People become 
and I, we, I had a discussion the other day with my son. There are a lot of people here who can't think for themselves. They, they sway and they bow to any form of opinion, making that you think, well, you know what, you should be like all the rest of us. Why aren't, you, why aren't you drinking or smoking or doing all these other things? Why aren't you voting for the liberals and all, all this stuff? Hang on a sec. I have my own mind. I can make my own decisions in my life. Today I choose life. Today I choose good. And just on that, on, on that point, I saw a very interesting discussion where a preacher was saying that if anybody votes for the Democratic Party where they... they um, condone abortion, you become an accomplice to murder. And I thought of that, that what he just said. And I said, you're right. 60 million babies have died already because of a Roe versus Wave got overturned through the Supreme Court. Now, you imagine 60 million babies got aborted? Mass murder, blood on your hands. And Christians want to vote for a party, a Democratic Party, who condones those things, who will allow those things to come through the Senate and the House and make it legislation that it's okay, that the abortion's fine, pro-choice? No. It's pro-life because God's got a life and he's, a, he's, he's our life inside of us. So turn from those ways. He's God saying, listen, just turn from those ways. And it says here, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish if you follow those ways. Um, you shall not live lo long in that land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life that your offspring may live. He, you see, God's thinking in advance. He's thinking up front. He's thinking in the future where not only you'll be blessed, but your children will be blessed. And if you think about it, if you stand on the, on the promises of God and you teach your children the ways of the Lord, and today it's, it's a difficult thing to do because they are so preoccupied by other things and they are so influenced and swayed by peer pressure at school that at least that they hear it and they see it. You have to be that living example for them. You have to show them. They have to hear the word. They have to know what is right or wrong. They have to hear no profanity come out of your mouth. They, know, they, they need to see you learn how to forgive others when they hurt you. They need to, sh they need to know that uh, when there's a choice to be made, it has to be made righteous, a righteous choice. Even if it's going to cost you something, it's going to have to be done the righteous way before God's eyes. And then they can see there's an integrity there. So there are important things that we need to show our children. But here's God saying, you choose life. Do you know, God will never force his religion on anyone. God will never force what we would, some people call it, don't, teach, don't tell me about your dogma. You know what? When I talk to people, I say, listen, I got, I got no religion, I got no dogma to tell you. All I got to tell you about is a relationship. My relationship with God, my Father, is through Jesus Christ. I realized what he did for me. I was a sinner. It's going to hell. I needed hope. I needed light in my, in my life. The only person that would give me that life was him. And I never turned back. You know, I'm doing new podcasts at the moment now, starting this podcast called From Six to Sixty. And I'm doing these little five-minute sort of like sound bites on certain areas of my life that I've learned. Uh, I've, I've written a book and I haven't even, I haven't got it even edited it yet. But, and, and I'm taking snippets from that. And it just goes to show you that there's these things that you start to understand is that, you know what, there are things that changed my life. And my first one was um, discipline. If you want to watch it, it's on, uh, we're on Spotify. Just click in Randolph Kubitschek Spotify and you'll see from, from 6 to 60 uh, with God. And every day I'll be doing one of these sound bites. And I understood about discipline. And here's talking about discipline. We need to discipline ourselves. We need to be disciplined by God. And that's really important. We need to receive that discipline and we need to say, do you know what? This is for my benefit. Because everything God does for you in your life is for your benefit. And of course, when he sees that you're prospering from that, he gets all the glory. So he benefits. 
So another thing about it is having that self-discipline, self-control, which is part of the fruit of the Spirit. Actually, it's the last one. You need to be self-disciplined and say, you know what? I'm going to discipline myself. And I'm going to, I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to get into God's Word and I'm going to pray. I got a routine in the morning. You know, my, my, my routine is I first start to worship and I praise the Lord. I read the Word and I pray. Then I go and exercise every morning. Uh, then I do my work. I have breakfast. So I got my routine. And I spoke about this thing that I got taught as a kid, make your bed in the morning. I've always seen my mother made her bed in the morning and my father made the bed in the morning. I made my bed in the mornings. You know, I did that since I was a kid, I guess. So when I wake up in the morning, bam, you make your bed. And they're just simple things. But you see, it's a disciplinary habit that will adopt in your life the other things. You see... You've got to understand that. When you form these habits, when you form these good disciplinary habits, they come part of your life. It's your lifestyle then. It's not really something that you think to do. You just do it. It's like worship. I worship God. I praise, I praise the Lord. I pray to my Father. I read the Word. Because it's my lifestyle. It's who I am. You know, they would say that Jesus prayed, but that was Jesus's lifestyle to pray. It was not sort of like a um, an initiated thing that he had to do. No, he wanted to do it. So God is saying here, therefore choose life that your, may, that your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in that land that the Lord had swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Now, we are entering into a time, nothing like any other time before in the entire history of mankind. A lot is in the balance. We can see right now that a lot of things are happening in this world that have never ever had these lockdowns. People that are, have faced total disasters, social distancing. I mean, I mean, you think about that. Would you ever thought of this? Five, ten. 20, 30, 50 years ago, nobody would ever, ever thought of that. So now we have to change our strategy. We have to get more fervent with the things of God. You remember when Jesus said to his disciples in the garden, I believe it's in Matthew 26, 41, where he says, watch and pray. Can you at least stay up for one hour and watch and pray? That's what we need to do. There's a calling for the church to watch and pray. Get into your prayer closet. Start seeking the Lord. Start hearing what the Father is saying. There are many voices out there and you're going to hear more and more voices as the days go on. You're going to ask yourself, which one do I believe? Guess what? There's one voice here crying out in the wilderness saying, believe this voice. Praise God. You know, the information age that we are living in at the moment now is, there's not a word for it. There is more information being churned out now than there was probably in the last hundred years. And if you look at it in just on a, on a, on a uh, I, I heard that on the, in the medical journal, uh, that, that they said there is more information coming out in one day than things that have been coming out in the last, I don't know how many years. So knowledge is growing exponentially. And we hear that we see that in Daniel, you know, knowledge will increase and it has increased to a tremendous amount. But what bothers me is not so much the knowledge. It's the lies that have turned, they, they have turned the truth around. They've made the truth and the facts into lies and they're trying to propagate that, those lies to the people. And people are naive and they, and they believe these lies. Do you know what? The devil is the father of lies. He's a deceiver. He's a murderer. You can overcome those, those lies and those deceptions that the devil's throwing at you by hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Lord, what do I need to know? Be led by peace or no peace. You know, this, this is really important. You know, in, in these days, uh, um, people are just saying, He's a bad man because, but why? Because they said so. Yeah, because somebody said so. He's a bad person. And yet they don't know the person, they don't know the person personally. They don't even know what the person stands for. So 
what I'm trying to say is this. Is I just go back to the very beginning and it says here, today choose life. Today choose God. Choose the way that the Father has shown us through His Son. He's taught us how to pray. He's given us everything that we need in this, in this, in this, in this earth. Given us the Word. He's given us the, the, the cross, the cross of Christ. I mean, that's important. That's what we need to exalt, the cross of Christ. I mean, we're exalting everything else, but let's exalt the cross of Christ. That's the thing that has set us free. That's the thing that's giving us eternal life. That's the thing that's giving us victory. Father, thank you for your son, that he shed his blood on that cross that would give me victory over sickness, over disease, over pain, no matter what you're facing. The victory is in Jesus, none other. Amen. I just want to share a few things I've just written down here. Um, yeah, I wrote here, what you think about the most you become. When you have to understand what you're thinking about is very important because as you think, you'll speak and as you'll speak, you'll act. So you have to remember is that what you're first thinking is your, how you have to line up your, your thinking with God's word. God's word has the answer to every single problem and situation upon this earth. Even with this coronavirus, even with these lockdowns, even with nations that are being under scrutiny at the moment, and with riots and other things, yes, there will be division upon this earth. There will be the the separation between the sheep and the goats, and that will be in the coming judgment. But for now, as a Christian, as a vessel of Christ, As a child of God, you have every weapon. You have all the things that have been given to you to overcome this the world, the flesh, and the devil. You stay strong in God. Say, God, I want to make a choice today to love you more, to follow you more, to know you more. I will make a disciplinary habit every single morning just to spend that time with you, whether it be in worship, in praise, in reading the word, or in prayer, or whatever that I will make that choice. You make that right choice because the rewards are great. Here he gave the condition to the children of Israel, choose life or death, blessing or curse. You know what? I want to live a life that's blessed. I want to live a life for God that would God would, would reveal to me every blessing, every promise he has in my life, that it would be revealed to the world and say, look what God has done. God can do it for one man, he can do it for another. He's no respecter of persons. Amen. Tell others about us. Subscribe. Get onto that podcast and see what uh, every day there'll be something new. So I'm working on that at the moment now. I've already got uh, one or two of them up. So stay tuned for more. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.